our approach to blood and blood products at Prince Charles is treating it as a liquid organ uh, transplant which doesn't quite currently enjoy the same reverence as for example lung and heart transplant and liver and bone marrow transplantation. Rotem allows you to detect main pathomechanisms of bleeding in a timely manner. And this is important because in severe massive bleeding, time counts and time is life. So we want to identify the cause of bleeding. Why is my patient bleeding right now? And within a few minutes, Rotem can give you an answer whether hyperhemolysis is there, whether fibrinogen uh, deficit is there, and probably also whether uh, thrombin generation is a problem. Look, the introduction of the program here at Prince Charles has been um, a great learning experience for us. We've, we, we had a traditional model of coagulation management which was really guesswork and we've now taken it through to um, really um, having some powerful data in real time for us to work with in the operating theatre and uh, as you can see uh, from our results, it's made a huge difference to both the practice of coagulation management um, and the whole um, issue of bleeding has become much more scientifically treated at our, at our hospital. So with point of care coagulation testing, this is one of our instruments, um, we can get a blood sample from the patient and have it up and running in our instrument within minutes. That results then streamed live back into the theatres and you can very quickly determine from the tenogram if the patient has a normal ability to make a clot or to achieve hemostasis. And if they do, then it's most likely a surgical bleed, so the surgeon will just keep looking and try and find that nasty little hole that's stuck around the back of the heart somewhere. Or if they have a coagulopathy, they can identify what are the specific contributors to the dysfunction of hemostasis and treat coagulopathy appropriately with the target of treatment. The, um the ROTAM information has allowed us to be specific to perioperative care instead of medical bleeding, which a lot of the previous tests were very helpful for. I think it allows us to be targeted in that we can specifically state to surgeons with visual clues and cues as to what the problem is and how best to determine the answer to it. And I think that it allows us to determine the specific components of the blood cascade that we need to affect as anesthetists whether it be fibrinogen factors um, or even the, the need for specific drugs to counteract heparin. And I think that uh, that specificity, the rapidity of its usage, and, its, and, and the tailored use to the perioperative situation has really helped us a lot. And it's a very dynamic situation. So we can do a test at time zero when we think we have a, might have a problem, do an intervention, do another test immediately, and within 10 minutes, we know if we're going in the right direction. The point of care testing was obviously a very important package and does serve to um, as a stake in the ground of, of a novel technology that was very important for, for people to base their testing around to give them confidence in their ability to reduce transfusion rates. So we got everyone together to do a process map figure out how we're going to do it, who are going to be the operators, the interpreters, how we're going to apply governance. Governance is also really important. You need good support from senior clinicians, from the executive, but most importantly have the right uh, workforce at the coalface to enforce um, appropriate protocols. Well, I think um, because we've had a huge team approach to the whole problem, both preoperatively, intraoperatively, and then in the intensive care unit, um, everyone has stepped up their game. Um, so we, we tr we're operating on less patients that are anemic. We're being a bit smarter about um, correcting coagulation, particularly the antiplatelet agents preoperatively. And um, then in the operation, we've got real-time data to work with. We can, if we've got a bleeding problem, we don't have to guess what the problem is. We can, we can treat it appropriately. Um, and that's been reflected in some of the practices. So we've seen an increase in the amount of cryo used. Um, and I think that just reflects the importance of fibrinogen in the whole process. Um, but much less FFP and all the volume issues related to that.
at our particular um, unit as well as retail use. So I think that's all been very positive both for us in the operating theatre but also for the patient. People were, and we got people on side, we got the pathologists on side, we got the clinicians, the intensivists, the cardiac surgeons, the anaesthetists, the nursing staff, the perfusionists, everyone really buying into it. I think the key part was education, education, education. I think getting people on side and making it seen as a team event rather than a single person or a research idea was brilliant. And I think what we've seen now is people that were never interested in blood before are really, really interested in blood and people that would dismiss it as a nothing before are totally bought in. One of our clinical nurse consultants was instrumental in uh, bringing a, a package of quality that we could all follow um, for the use in theatre. So for instance accreditation and management around the uh, equipment and also disseminating an educational package for people uh, regarding interpretation. So we've had posters up around a number of areas around the hospital with uh, how to interpret rotiums and a number of education sessions have been introduced. And overall I think this has been very, very successful and a very, very important part of implementing this new technology. Um, blood product and uh, making their use more appropriate across the entire campus or service is a team effort and as stated um, it starts with good patient education early detection of anemia and appropriate interve intervention even prior to elective surgery. Um, also making the, or standardizing for example, um, the uh, massive blood transfusion protocols and making people aware of that is very much uh, at the forefront of creating these savings. So, um with our results over the last 12 months since we instituted point of care testing, we've had uh, an overall massive decrease in the amount of blood transfusion and um, both red blood cell units and non-red blood cell units. The, the major changes have been uh, red blood cells, platelets and fresh frozen plasma have all decreased significantly with red blood cell use being cut by one third, uh, platelet usage being cut by almost two thirds and fresh frozen plasma being cut by almost three quarters the number of units we've used. Um, one of the interesting things we've found is that we've increased our cryoprecipitate use slightly, although essentially the same number of patients have received units. And we feel this probably reflects that instead of using uh, transfusion of all blood components at the same time because we didn't have a directed approach, we're now using more appropriate targeted uh, blood transfusion. And so for instance in the past we may have just used fresh frozen plasma, we're now targeting the fibrinogen levels and using cryoprecipitate. Um, we have um, over a financial year managed to produce monetary savings of around $929,000. Overall our um, blood product usage has reduced by approximately 40% and <coughs> the main uh, contributing factors to that have been as stated point of care testing. The reason for that is if you have point of care available immediately by competent practitioners to anaesthetists, surgeons, intensivists, etc., you can make a difference. And the cost, the cost uh, benefit of uh, point of care testing is obviously self-evident in the savings that we have created. In big, big drops in our utilisation of blood in theatre and intensive care. And in various other studies we've done, we've shown that the less fluid they get, the quicker they get out of intensive care, the better they do, and the cheaper their hospital stay is. So it's beneficial the whole way around.